Welcome to Ground Control. Um, I have the Esheen F16 50mm EDF jet kit and I've just started assembling this kit. I, I've already produced one video on the review of this kit to go over the different components and 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 how it was shipped and and what I thought about the assembly and now that I'm getting into the assembly I wanted to provide you with some tips on this and first I have decided on the electronic components that I'm going to use in this kit so I want to give you that information first we'll let you know what, what I think my all up weight is going to be and what I think my thrust to weight ratio based on that estimate is going to be okay so what I was shooting for was a minimum of a 1.8 to 1 thrust to weight ratio on this conversion because everything I've read, a 1.8 to 1 thrust to weight ratio is about the minimum you need for unlimited vertical. And I really wanted to get unlimited vertical power on this airframe. So I went back and I looked at all of my thrust data and the props that I used. And the motor that I decided to go with is the Racer Star BR2406S 2600 kV motor. It's a 2S to 4S motor on a 3S with the prop that I selected for it which is an RC Timer 6x3 high efficiency composite sport prop. I absolutely love that prop. I use that on my F22 Mini as well. Oh, and, and this kit is courtesy of Banggood and I want to thank them for sending this kit to do this conversion on. So, at, on a 3S LiPo at wide open throttle, it produces, with that prop, it produces 863 grams pulling 23.8 amps. That gives me an efficiency of 2.9 grams per watt. Now, for the amount of thrust that produces, that is a pretty good efficiency with that 6x3 high efficiency sport prop. The ESC that I'm going to use, and I did run into some trouble with the ESC that I originally planned on using. On the EDF version of this jet, I wanted to run it on a 4S LiPo and that 30 amp speed controller just wasn't going to handle it. So I replaced the 30 amp speed controller in the EDF version of this jet with a 40 amp speed controller. So I was planning on using that ESC for this pusher motor and prop conversion on the kit. Unfortunately, when I was testing it on the motor, without any prop load on it, just, just the motor without a prop at all, spinning it up. It was smooth up to about 75% throttle, and then when I went above 75% throttle, I started getting a stutter in the motor, so the timing was off. And I really didn't have time to sit down and go through the manual on the ESC and, and program it with my transmitter, trying to set different timing parameters on it and then test it again, change it and test it again until I found the smoothest setting on the motor. So I remember that when I had the Esheen Atom RC seal wing G1500 that I also replaced the stock 30 amp speed controller in it with a 40 amp speed controller. So I pulled that out of my parts bin and connected it and the motor started spinning at just 10% throttle and, it, and the throttle was completely linear and completely smooth all the way to 100% throttle. So that is the ESC that I'm using in this, the 30 amp ESC from the Ishin Atom RC Sealwing G1500 and if I'm not mistaken the back on that ESC is 5 volt providing 3 amps of power. So should be plenty of power to run four or nine gram servos and, the, and a six channel receiver which is what I have in it. The servos that I selected I really wanted to put digital servos on it but when I was going through my parts bin all I had were some brand spanking new Racer Star SG90 nine gram servos nylon gear servos but they're analog instead of digital. Now I had purchased these quite a while ago to have some spare servos as I was doing builds and conversions and I picked up a six pack of these for like eight dollars and fifty nine cents when they were on sale so I bought two six packs of these nine gram servos. Now I have used the Racer Star 
digital servos before and they perform flawlessly so I'm hoping the analogs do as well. Um, I've never used their analog servos. If you've, if you've watched my videos before talking about servos, you know I prefer digital over analog because they seem to hold their centers better, but we'll see how this goes. But that's what I've got. I've got four uh, of those Racer Star SG90 9 gram servos to put on this. Okay, so my estimated all up weight on this plane, and I've kind of been weighing it, you know, after I selected all the components to kind of get an idea what it was going to weigh. And so it looks like I'm going to be somewhere between 475. 470 to 475 grams all up weight with my 3S 1500 milliamp hour uh, 35C lipos, which weigh 125 grams. Uh, I might be lighter than that if I can get my CG with my smaller 3S 1300 milliamp hour lipo uh, 30C lipos, which will only weigh 106 grams all up weight. And those are the lipos that I use in my F22 Mini version 3. And I get, you know, tons of power out of that power system and tons of flight time. So we'll just have to see once I get the servos in place if I can get my CG with the lighter weight battery. If not, I'll have to use the 1500s. And that's what I based my all up weight on was that. So if I can stay at or below 478 grams all up weight, which I think I can, then that should give me a 1.8 to 1 thrust to weight ratio. So that means unlimited vertical. That's where I want to be when I complete this project. Okay, so that covers all of the electronic components. So now we'll go over some of the assembly tips on this. All right, for the assembly tips, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the plywood that I use for the motor mount. I use three millimeter thick uh, plywood. It's a hobby grade plywood. It's very straight. Um, it's very durable, and yet it's pretty lightweight. So I like using this stuff for motor mounts and things like that. And I, I purchased this in a pack of four or five of these squares at, a, at Hobby Lobby. Okay, so the motor mount. The motor mount I designed, you know, I, I measured the inside of, uh, inside diameter and made sure it, it's actually almost completely circular, which, which was great. It made it easier. So I went in about 18 millimeters inside uh, the air outlet part of the fuselage based on the motor and the prop I'm using. And I wanted to make sure I had enough clearance between the prop, the vertical stabilizer, and the horizontal stabilizer. Because the horizontal stabilizers were actually closer to the prop than the vertical stabilizer is. And so I'm in about 18 millimeters from, from the face, the back face of the, of the motor mount. That's, that's how far I went in and that's, what I, that's where I measured the diameter to create this, this template for the motor mount. And this, there's a link to this. PDF file in the show notes and I designed it so that it has these have, uh, three sides have tabs. I wanted to make it with tabs so that they were embedded in the foam so I just basically cut slots in the foam <coughs> on the two sides and on the bottom to embed this this motor mount in because I didn't want to just I didn't want to just trust glue to hold it in place so this thing is not going to go anywhere now. And then the, uh, the notch on the top, I oriented the motor so that the wires are going through the top notch on the motor mount because that's where the wire channel is, on the top of the fuselage, not the bottom of the fuselage. So, so that's why I, ori I oriented the motor mount and the motor that way. Now before I glued these two together, this, this bottom air outlet uh, to the top with the, with the motor mount in it, I went ahead and, you know, got my ESC in there, pulled the ESC wires through the bottom of the, of the motor mount, connected my motor up without the prop on it, of course, and made sure that the motor was spinning in the proper direction so I wasn't going to have to disconnect and reconnect those wires. This made it easier for me. So I glued in the motor mount along with the bottom section of the air outlet, you know, everything encases the, the motor mount. 
and then let that set up with the motor attached to the ESC wires, you know, just setting on the table so that once this set up, I could just pull the slack up on those ESC wires through that cutout in the top of the motor mount and then attach my prop to it, attach the motor to the, to the motor mount and then attach the prop to it. And what I did, I just took a couple of rubber bands and put a couple, slid a couple rubber bands up toward the, the, as far forward as I could get it and toward the back to make sure that the mating surfaces were all held in place while the glue set up. And that worked out great. It's very, very solid and that motor mount is not going to go anywhere. All right, so moving on after the motor mount and, and uh, I'll, have, I'll have pictures that I'm going to throw up on the screen that will show you, you know, close-ups of these things. You've probably already seen a couple of them, maybe all of them. Oh, the other thing that I did, and I recommend you do this before you install your other panels, is, and I don't have any of this stuff glued in yet, but um, this magnetic hatch that you have for the EDF unit. What I did before I glued this together was I put that EDF hatch on there. It's just, just magnetic, so I just set it in there with magnets just to make sure that when I glued this bottom panel on and when I glue this panel on that everything's aligned. I, I want to make sure <laughs> that I don't pull those back too far and not be able to get that magnetic hatch in. So that magnetic hatch is kind of my guide for where I need to locate these other panels. You know, I don't want them off by a couple of millimeters because then I'm in trouble. Okay, so now you can see the SC wires go all the way through there. But one of the one of the first steps that I I did I performed after installing the motor mount and getting the ESC and receiver wires pulled through the fuselage up into the canopy was on the plug and fly version over here where the the servo connectors come through the fuselage through the two through the two halves of the fuselage here well they have a raised section they have a raised foam section with a slot in the center to bring the the servo cable wires through the Y cable wires because on the plug and fly version they have the um, Y cable connectors in this channel and very short wires on or fairly short wires on the wing on the aileron servos so that you 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 can you know you can connect the servos up once you assemble the plane and you're not having to fish them through, you know, from inside the fuselage. Well, I'm not going to do that. I want my servo cables to come all the way through into the fuselage, and then I'm going to connect my Y cables. So I remove that raised portion of that foam on this section, the top section of the fuselage, and also on the bottom section, you know, where it overlaps, because there's raised sections on both of those. And so now when I, I, when I attach my wing, my, my servo cables are going to come all the way in the fuselage and then connect to my Y cable so that I've got enough length to get into the canopy where the receiver is going to be. And if I ever need to remove these servos, I've got an open channel here where I can bring those connectors back through again. And it's going to make it a lot easier than trying to tuck all that wire into that little cavity. So that, that's the first tip for you. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on. And these are the steps that I, I, I've decided that, that will make it easiest for me to complete this build-in conversion. All right, so the next step after, after what I just showed you is going to be um, installing the elevator servos and extension cables. And I'm going to install those next, bring those cables in. So. So that'll be another set of cables, and I've got two extension cables on, on my elevator servos. I, I did need about, oh, I, I would say they're probably about 100, 150 millimeters in length um, extension cables because the, the, they're split elevators, so it's going to require two extension cables and two channels on the receiver. So I'm using my fifth channel as my second elevator channel, you know, because they're both going to be swinging the boat the same direction. Okay, so then connect those to your Y cable and bring those up and connect them. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do after that is install the aileron servos in the wings. All right, so I can bring those cables in, connect those to the Y connector, 
Okay, I'm not going to glue my wings. I'm just going to I'm just going to connect them like I've got them on here right now. They're just they're just attached with magnets. So I'm going to install my servos, bring my wires in, connect them to the Y, bring them up in the canopy, and connect them to the receiver. Once I get my elevator wires in the channel and connected to the receiver, my my um, aileron servos connected to the Y cable connected to the receiver. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those uh, five millimeter by one half millimeter thick carbon slats to glue across this bridge to hold these uh, wires in place. Probably one at the back and one in the front. And I'm going to take some of the some packing material that I've saved and glue the packing material the same width as this channel right here uh, to the bottom of those slats so that not only is it going to keep them from falling but it's going to apply pressure to those cables to keep them nice and taut so it's not going to allow any slack in the cables uh, later on so so I'm going to do that okay so now on let me put this back on and then on to the next step on my procedure here okay so at this point once I once I get all my cables installed I've got them all secured I've got them all up into the canopy and I've got them attached to the receiver now is the time that I'm going to glue on the bottom part of the air inlet this large panel uh, I'm not going to glue in the, the wing spar but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the wings apart just enough to get some glue on the back side of the trailing edge of the wing, you know, before you get to the ailerons, and a little bit on the leading edge, on the on the inside seam of the leading edge of the wing, just so I, there's no chance of these coming loose from these from these magnets, because with a pusher prop on here, I'm going to be doing wing tip launches, and so I I don't I don't want to trust that to a couple of magnets. So, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull them apart far enough to get a little glue in there and then let those set up. And then once, once I get those, then I'm going to glue on this panel here. Now, now I've got everything, all the wires secured, everything's connected. Of course, I've tested everything to make sure everything's moving in the proper direction. I've got everything connected properly, right? Before I ever glue this panel back on. Okay, so now I've got that panel glued on. Next step, and okay, I'm going to read my notes here so I don't forget anything. Okay, so now, and, and make sure that you have your magnetic EDF hatch attached again so that you're not off by a millimeter or two, okay? You don't want to crowd out that center panel. Okay, so I've got that glued in now. And everything is attached the way it should be, and it's aligned the way it should be. Okay, so now at this point, this is where I'm going to glue in my horizontal stabilizers. So I'm going to glue in my horizontal stabilizers and what I typically do is I'll take a couple of spring clamps and a couple of little pieces of plastic like from a gift card or something and then I'll put one on the bottom and one on the top and I will clamp those while they're setting up so that you know it, it'll hold them in place but the plastic will keep the clamps from making impressions in the foam. And I'll let that set up overnight. So my horizontal stabilizers are on, right? Okay, so once that's done, I've got my wings on, I've got my horizontal stabilizers on, I've got the bottom half of my air inlet panel glued in, all that is glued in, right? Okay, so now at this point, what I'm going to do, I let it set all that set up overnight. So everything's cured. I don't have to worry about messing anything up. Now's the time that I'm going to connect all of my linkages to my, my control surfaces and to my servos and make sure that I get all my, my um, control surfaces in a completely neutral position, you know, elevators and ailerons. And then I will adjust the, the radio programming depending on the amount of deflection. Now I already have a setup file for the the Esheen 50 millimeter uh, EDF version of this jet, and I will provide a link to that as well. But the setup file uh, is going to be my guide 
for setting up my radio. I'm basically going to copy copy my my EDF version to my pusher version, and then the only thing I have to adjust is adding the second channel for the elevator, and then making sure that my control surface deflection, the amount of control surface deflection that that I have on this new radio matches what I have in my setup file. I want the control surface deflection in the Expo for this conversion to be exactly like the EDF version that I'm running on 4S. That's the way I want it to handle, only this one should have significantly more power than the EDF version on, on a 4S LiPo and it should have significantly longer flight times as well if everything goes as planned. Okay, so now that I've got my linkages connected, everything is programmed and ready to go, the last thing that I'm going to do as far as the uh, gluing anything on to this is now I'm going to glue on my vertical stabilizer and I'm going to glue on the nose cone. Those are going to be the last two things that I'm going to glue on because I did, number one, I don't want to bump that needle and get something while I'm flipping it back and forth, you know and break the nose off of it and I don't want to break the vertical stabilizer because I sometimes I gotta flip it on its back to do work, right? So those are the last two items that I'm gonna glue onto the fuselage. Last thing I'm gonna do, I've already checked my control surface deflection, program into my radio, everything's set to go, right? My motor's spinning in the right direction, my servos are moving in the right direction, everything is working as it should. Now's the time to test your fail safe. Make sure your fail safe is working as it should. And once that's done, you are ready to launch. So, okay, so I have provided links to all the components that I have used, less my speed controller. I did a search for the same speed controller that I used in this, and I could not find it. Apparently, they don't have parts listed for the Esheen Atom RC Silwing G1500 yet. But I would look for that shortly. But I did provide links to two other ESCs, 30 amp speed controllers. And the, the one that I would prefer to use if I didn't have this one is the Volantex 30 amp plug and play speed controller. And it looks like the cables on it are long enough for this plane <coughs> that you won't have to use any extension cables for your ESC, for your power cable or for your receiver cable. And I have never had a problem with one of those Volantex plug-and-play plug and ESCs, whether it's 30 amp, 40 amp, 20 amp. They all work flawlessly for me, and they're, they're kind of my go-to ESCs now. And they're fairly inexpensive for what you get. So I have that one listed first, and then I have an XXD 30 amp. It's a, it's a smaller, lighter, uh, smaller profile, lighter weight, 30 amp speed controller than the Volatex, but I have not used that specific ESC. I have used other XXD ESCs and motors before and they have all worked very, very well, even with high KB motors, but I have not tested that one before. The Volatex one I have, and it works extremely well. And as soon as this one becomes available, in, in the parts list for the Ishin Atom RC Sealwing G1500, I will put that. I'll try to. I'll try to make you aware of it. Let me put it that way. Okay. So my hope is by this weekend I will have this ready to launch. Now that I've gone gone over all of these tips with you, I'm going to work probably until late this evening to get my build completed on this. At least get it to the point where. I'm ready to I'm ready to let it set overnight and then and then attach my control linkages and then my vertical stabilizer and my nose cone, you know, and then and then test my fail safe. I should and my control surface deflection and I should be ready to throw this in the air. So but thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.